Morning, everyone. Um, my name is Cormac Flynn, and I work at the ATU uh, Galway campus. And I'm a mechanical engineer who teaches physiology. And I want to talk about some UDL implementations I made into a, a module I deliver. The module is a first year physiology module. Uh, typically, there are about 40 students in the class. Uh, in addition to Irish students, there are also students who have African, Asian, Eastern European heritage. There are students who identify as being dyslexic, have anxiety issues, and are autistic, among other things. Prior to the UDL implementation, um, I, uh, the assessment schedule for this module was a 60% closed book written exam and a 40% continuous assessment. And then I run the class as a flipped classroom. So what that means is students have to prepare something prior to coming to class. And what I normally have them do is a Moodle lesson. So a Moodle lesson is an activity within Moodle where students go through content and then answer questions as they're making their way through that content. Um, students like it. They like the Moodle lessons. They're, um, it allows them to go through the content in their own time, at their own pace. Um, however, there is some feedback from students uh, indicating that the Moodle lessons can be complex or dense or wordy. So there's an example of a um, a Moodle lesson on the left there. So there's a lot of text, a lot of information to absorb, and some students find that difficult to get through. So this is something that I wanted to address in my delivery. On the assessment side of things, um, it's known that uh, closed book written exams disadvantage students, the disadvantage students who have challenges in writing, disadvantage students who have anxiety issues, disadvantage students who have attention issues. So this is something that I wanted to address as well in my delivery. Um, so what did I do? So in terms of the Moodle lessons, what I offered the students was a choice of pathways through a Moodle lesson. So within a Moodle lesson, there would be subtopics. And so for each subtopic, a student had the choice of either reading the content as before, or they could watch a video. And the video was me just building up the content gradually. So labeling a diagram um, or some other activity like that. The video is five to 10 minutes long. After a student would read, the text or watch a video, they would move on and answer the same questions that, um, uh, and then move on to the next subtopic which, where they'd be further offered a choice between reading or watching a video. On the assessment side of things, the pandemic offered one great advantage. It allowed me to jettison the closed book written exam. There's no exams being held. And it allowed me to re replace the exam with, a, um, with an e-portfolio. So an e-portfolio was a digital representation of students' learning and also, more, most importantly, their reflection on that learning. So the e-portfolio consisted of a series of scaffolded tasks throughout the year, um, building up you know, some goal setting, letting me get to know them a little bit better, and then working on to summarizing a topic they would have covered during the week, and then moving on to you know, researching a topic which was beyond the content covered in the Moodle lessons. Um, so I'm off, um, within those tasks as well, I'm offering students choice. So there's choice within all those tasks. The numbers um, after each... Um, um, line is uh, just uh, uh, referencing the checkpoints of the UDL framework by CAST. Um, so in recruiting student interest, the students could also use whatever tools they wanted to create their e-portfolio um, and whatever media that they wanted to use. They just uploaded it onto OneNote. So I used OneNote Class Notebook as the e-portfolio platform. Um, every task had a reflection component, um, so it allowed the students to reflect on the tasks they did, identify what they liked about it, what were their challenges, how did they try and overcome those challenges, and what further things they would like to learn. So the learning process was becoming visible to the student through the reflection component. It also allowed me to identify and act upon any challenges that the students were having. So for example, when they were researching a topic, um, they were overwhelmed with the information online. You know, what's good information online? What's poor information online? So I provided some tools to um, guide the information processing. Um, so one such example was using a tool called the CRAP tool. So it's a simple one-page document where the students answer a series of questions. And um, by answering those questions, they can ascertain whether an online resource is a good source or not, maybe not a good, so good source. Um, tasks were, some tasks were group tasks. So um, to develop some collaboration and community within the class. So they shared their e-portfolios with each other, gave each other feedback, and then that allowed them to improve their own portfolios going forward. And then after they um, um, uh, submitted their tasks, there was multiple means of representation and the feedback that I provided. So I provided both written and audio feedback uh, to them. So what did they think about all these implementations? So in terms of the Moodle lessons, 
Uh, almost all students liked having a choice between reading or watching a video. Um, most students read as before, so about 10 to 15% of the students would look at the video. So it's a relatively small number, but that's good. It's, it's okay. We're, we're making the content more accessible to a few extra students every year, and these videos can be reused year on year. So we're, we're drawing more students into the learning environment. In terms of feedback from students, um, some students liked watching the video and reading the content, so it allowed them to further um, engage with the material and deepen their understanding of the material. Some students also comment that the tone of my voice in the videos allowed them to see what was important in terms of the content. So there's a rich set of information there that students could engage with. In terms of the portfolio, um, there's lots of examples of multiple means of action and expression. So this is an um, a selection of pages from this portfolio. Students used lots of different tools. They used Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Prezi, um, they recorded meetings on Teams, uploaded those. Some students opted to just work with OneNote itself and created lovely uh, artistic pages and embedded audio in there. Some students just opted to hand draw beautiful posters um, and up scan those and upload those as well. So there are plenty of tools being used. What did they think about the portfolio? Most students said it allowed them to research tasks that were interesting to them. So it was engaging and it recruited their interest. Students' um, feedback indicated that it allowed them to demonstrate their learning in ways that was personal to them and allowed them to be creative. Overall in the module, there was a 12% increase in the average grade since you know, implementation of these UDL approaches. But more important for me was the enthusiasm in the class, the engagement with the activities, the engagement with the assessment. One comment from a student, uh, which kind of summed up, you know, reflected a lot of uh, students' um, uh, feelings about the, the module. I enjoy learning about the body, so this module really interested me. It was like leaving cert biology without all the boring plant bits. <laughs> so <laughs> apologies to botanists, nothing against them, but just for this student, um, you know, the, the, this module engaged them. The activities, the way the content was delivered engaged them, and they found what they were looking for. Future plans, a lot of around multiple means of engagement. I want to further optimize the choice and autonomy for students and give them a say in how they're assessed to allow them to design e-portfolio tasks. Um, I want to develop more engaging, more interactive um, uh, lessons, develop, you know, have better tools for self-assessment for students and also allow, allow them to attract their own progress. So through the Higher Education 4.0 project, I have a, um, I'm developing you know, you, um, content which is more interactive and more engaging for the student. And I'm always looking for opportunities to make activities in the classroom more engaging and to develop a sense of collaboration and community. So I'm trying out digital escape rooms so students in the class can work together and they're solving a puzzle. They're trying to get out of a room um, digitally um, by um, you know, following clues, answering questions based on physiology content. So my role in spreading UDL, I'm a facilitator of the UDL badge in ATU. It's my second year doing it. I really love doing it. I learn so much from the, uh, the staff who take the badge. I learn how they're implementing UDL in their own practice. Um, I'm part of the U ATU Goa Mayo UDL steering group, led by another shout out to Colin Tierney in the audience there. Um, so we meet regularly and talk about all things UDL and how we can spread it through the ATU. I've got great opportunities to share my practice um, within ATU and beyond, um, thanks to the Teaching and Learning Office in Galway and, um, and Sligo. They've organized some great uh, UDL events over the last few years. And then most importantly, in, in terms of spreading UDL, it's listening, listening to the students, listening to other staff, how do they use UDL, how do they embed it in their own practice, what can I learn from them, and how do I spread UDL further? Um, thanks very much. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to speak here and share my practice. I'm really enjoying the other talks so far and I'm looking forward to the other talks. A shout out to the Teaching and Learning Office in uh, Galway and Sligo, um, Karina Ginty and Neve Plunkett. Thank you for really supporting UDL within ATU. Um, yeah, there's some resources available here at the QR code. Just do the one on the left. If you do the one on the right, you'll end up in an infinite loop. Um, so there's some stuff in there with respect to the portfolio and also the Moodle lessons. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>